colleagues. My name is Possible, and I'll be your tutor for today. In our previous discussion, we look at total domestic expenditure, whereby we said that total domestic, uh, domestic expenditure focuses on the aggregate or the summation of the expenditures that has transpired within the domestic country. And then from there, when we are measuring it, we said that consumption plus investment plus government expenditure. So we look at that one. And then we came to the total final expenditure. And we said that we are looking at um, the production um, of the finished goods that has transpired within the economy. Yes, there were a lot of production that took place, but we are having some of them in the warehouse, of which we will still work on them in the next year to come. That way we are not going to capture them. So under the total final expenditure, we are saying that all the expenditures that has taken place in accordance with the production um, of finished goods, we must record them. And that one we said that is consumption plus investment plus government expenditure and then plus exports. We are adding export because the commodities that we are exporting to other countries, they are in finished nature. Or let me say they are finished goods. That is why we are sending them to other nations. And then straight away from there, we also look at the gross domestic expenditure. Gross domestic expenditure is the same as the gross domestic product or the gross domestic um, income. Because we are saying that the expenditure approach is equal to the um, income approach and is equal to the product approach. So we said that if we want to measure gross domestic um, expenditure or gross domestic product, is going to be consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus exports minus import. So in simple put, we said that it's the same as the total final expenditure, which is TFE plus uh, TFE minus import. TFE minus import. I hope you are getting it. So let us quickly look at it carefully. So we said that GDP is equal to consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus export minus import or TFE minus import. So that is where we ended um, in our um, last lecture. Now today we are going to start with GDP, which is a gross domestic product or gross domestic expenditure. Now when you talk about gross domestic expenditure, we are talking about the market or the monetary value of all final goods and services produced by the residents of a country in one year. We are talking about the market value. The market, when you say market value, is the prevailing price um, that have been caused by the invisible hand of the market, which is demand and supply. I hope you are getting this. That's the market value, the prevailing price, the current price on the market. I hope it makes sense. So the market value or the monetary value, yes indeed, we produce maca, we produce pen, we produce pencil, we produce book, yes indeed we produce all of them. But we can't enter them in the books, we can't record them in the books until we quantify them in monetary terms. That is why we are saying that the GDP is the market value or the monetary value. So what is the monetary value of the marker? What is the monetary value of the pencil? What is the monetary value of the book? Let us bring all of them together. And that is going to give us what is called gross domestic expenditure. I hope it makes sense. So we are saying that gross domestic product or gross domestic expenditure is the market value or the monetary value of all goods and services that are produced within the boundaries of a, 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 a country, within the boundaries of a country or within the boundaries of an economy. I hope it makes sense. By the residents. Resident is underlined. And then uh, goods that are produced by the residents of a country. So the country is underlined. When we talk about residents, we are talking about the, the people who are living in the country as at the time of the measurements. Listen to me carefully. 
So it could be foreigners who are living in the country, and it could also be the nationals of that particular country in question. I hope you are getting it. So if you talk about domestic, once we are conducting the survey, once we are conducting the production that has transpired within the economy, whether you are from China, or you are from England, or you are from Lesotho, or you are from Uganda, or Nigeria, that we are not interested in that. Once you are within the economy, as at the date of the measurement, you are part. So domestic, domestic says that which people are within the economy as a date of measurement, and which people are contributing to the economy as a as the date of the measurement, irrespective of their nationality, consider them. I hope it makes sense that the domestic within the walls of the economy, within the walls of the country, as at the date of the measurement, record all of them. So we are saying that they are the market value or the monetary value of all finance. Now, the word final also is very important. Final in the sense that we are not looking at intermediary goods, we are not looking at second-hand goods, no. We are not looking at work in progress, no. We are looking at the final. That is why we said that the formula for GDP could also be written as a total final expenditure minus import. So from the definition, the market value or the monetary value of all final goods and services produced by the residents of a country in one year. I hope it makes sense. Yeah. So that is the GDP. Now straight away from there we are going to look at the components of the GDP. There are a lot of things that come together for us to get GDP. Right? And we said that from our previous lecture, we said that the GDP is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus export minus imports. Right now, we are going to look at each one of them in deep of incarnation so that we will understand all of them. Now, the first one is the consumption. When you talk about consumption, consumption focuses on the expenditure um, by the household or the, the like uh, the cost that has been incurred by the household on the final um, on the goods and services, or let me say the final goods and services that have been produced by the. Um, the public sector or the industrial sector or the manufacturing sector. I hope it makes sense. Or by the firms, in simple put. So we are saying that when you talk about consumption, these are the costs or these are the expenditure that has been incurred by the household in the course of um, their consumption or in the course of their patronizing the goods and the services that has been produced by the firms. I hope you are getting it. And now we are saying that consumption could be categorized into three. We have consumption which is expenditure on durable goods and then consumption which is expenditure on non-durable goods and then the third one is consumption which is expenditure on service right so when you are solving any economics question and then you are being taught to calculate for the consumption look through the question be searching for the expenditures on the durable goods one on the non-durable goods then the services and then put all of them together, that one will give you one figure called consumption. So you are saying that the consumption is the expenditure incurred by the household as a result of patronizing the goods and services or the final goods and services that has been produced by the firm. That is one component of the GDP or the GDE. I hope you are getting it. The next one is what is called investment. Investment. When you talk about investment, we are talking about um, in economics. You see, economics investment is different from accounting investment, and it's different from finance investment, right? Economics investment is talking about the purchase of capital goods, purchase of equipment that you're going to use for further production. That is what economists normally re um, refers to as investment. And also inventory. When you're reading accounting, IES2, which is inventory, but under economics, inventory is an investment. We call it unplanned investment. We also have business investment. We have residential investment. We have a lot of investment. I hope you are getting it. So what you're trying to say is that the second component of the GDP is investment. Now listen to me. Sometimes you will not see investment in the question. But you will see gross domestic um, capital formation. 
gross domestic capital formation, it is the same as investment. Gross domestic capital formation is the same as investment. Put it at the back of your mind. And sometimes so they want to, um, they want to trick you, or they would like, they want to um, pull your leg a bit, and then because of that, they're not going to give you gross domestic um, capital formation. They're going to give you something like net domestic capital formation. Listen to me carefully. We are computing or we are calculating the value of GDP, and then GDP says gross domestic, gross domestic. So once you are working on the GDP, which stands to reason that all the gross elements are supposed to be captured. When you get a question and then the investment is in next nature, and then the investment is in next nature or in net value. Listen to me carefully, I'm repeating it. If you get a question and then the investment is in net figure or in net nature, Make sure to convert it into gross. I'm repeating it. Make sure to convert the net investment into gross. How can we convert the net investment, which is the net um, capital formation, into gross? By adding depreciation value in the question. By adding depreciation value in the question to the net capital formation figure in the question. I'm repeating it. Add depreciation value in the question to the, uh, to the net capital formation value in the question. And that one will convert it from the net to gross. I hope you are getting it. Now the next issue is that we are going to add depreciation. Yes, we have understood it. But in most often, or let me say, uh, most of the times we are not going to see uh, depreciation in the question. But they will try to also pull your leg a bit. Now, if you want to get the figure of depreciation, and then depreciation is not in the question, set for capital consumption according to income tax law. Depreciation is the same as capital consumption or capital allowance. Capital allowance or capital consumption. So if you don't see depreciation, you see capital allowance or capital consumption. It's the same as depreciation. Good. So now we are done with investment. The next one is government spending, or let me say government expenditure. Now government expenditure is different from government purchase. In the sense that the government purchase is just a portion of the government expenditure. So when you see government purchase in the question and then you see other items of the government, please make sure to put all of them together so that you get one figure for government expenditure. I hope it makes sense. So we are saying that we have government expenditure and then government expenditure is the, let me say, the totality of all the expenses that have been paid by the government. So when you see government purchase, it's just a tiny part of the government expenditure. Make sure to add it to other portion of the expenditures that the government uh, incurred within the economy. Then you are going to add exports and you are going to less imports. So these items are the components of the, of, the, of the GDP, gross domestic product, gross domestic product. So when you put all of these items together, you are going to get what is called gross domestic product at market price. At market price, we write the market price like this, GDP at market price, like subscribe MP. Subscripts MP. I hope you are getting it. And the market price, I have already discussed it in one of the lectures. It is the market prevailing price and it includes indirect tax and excludes subsidy. I hope you are getting it. Nice one. So when you put all the components together, you're going to get GDP, gross domestic product at market price. Nice one. Now let us look at the difference between national income and domestic income. Now, when you talk about the national income, we are talking about the incomes, um, the income items of the nationals of a particular country, right? Provided we are using Ghana, for instance, um, we are going to look at all the incomes that has been brought into the country by Ghanaians, whether they are within the country or they are outside the country. 
So we are going to look at all the Ghanaians who are in Germany, Ghanaians who are in China, Dubai. We are going to bring all their incomes back home. And then all the Ghanaians within the country, as at the date of the measurement, we are going to put all their incomes together and then add it also to the ones that you are bringing outside the country. That is national, national income. So national income starts stand to reasons that let us compete for the income of only the nationals, the citizens. But domestic income stands to reason that let us compete for the income of the people who are living within the country as at the date of the measurement. Whether they are foreigners or they are nationals, put all of them together because we are looking at the domestic within the boundary as at the date of measurement. Which people are in the country add all their incomes together. And why is it important to measure that? It is very important on the economists to differentiate between national income and domestic income in the sense that sometimes when the economy is performing very well because we use domestic approach or domestic income, we might think that is the, like the country is performing well because the, like the domestic income is big. Let me come again. Now sometimes you see domestic income figure when you see it and then it is big, you might be deceived that the economy is performing well. But it is not like that in actual sense because you have foreigners who are within the country who will definitely expatriate or send their income back home. They will send their income back to their country. So we are saying that domestic income must be differentiated from national income in the sense that national income will help us to know the actual income that belongs to the particular country in question and then the domestic income that one might deceive us because it captures both the foreigners and then the citizens of a particular country i hope it makes sense so that is why it is important to differentiate them right nice one so domestic income when domestic income is big it does not necessarily mean that the people in the country are better off no they are not better off because the citizens particularly are not producing and then they are not bringing in much money it could be that but the major part let me say it could be that 90 per 90 percent portion of the domestic income might belong to the foreigners who are within the country. So it is very important to differentiate between the domestic income and the national income so that to be able to know the income, the actual income that have been brought into the nation by the nationals or by the citizens of the country. All right. So that is the end of our lecture. In our next lecture, we are going to look at some of the exceptions or some of the things that um, we are supposed to exclude or we are supposed to um, um, subtract when we are working under um, gross domestic expenditure or the gross domestic product. Once again, my name is Possible from Ghana. Make sure to subscribe and then follow the, um, the lectures. Bye-bye.